So, Marcus Conti reporting. We're going to talk about uh, health care in America. Bernie Sanders fighting back with what we'll call Bernie Care. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Obamacare, right? Now it's, it's Bernie Care. Free stuff. Bernie's just giving away the house. Ah, is that what he's doing? Fucking socialist. The socialist just rolled out Medicare for all. And we're going to analyze it. We got, we got Bernie Sanders. I think the best way always... To find out what is in the mind of the politician is to hear it come out of his own mouth rather than have it twisted and turned by the pundits. So let's have a look. So here's Bernie Sanders. But first, before we go deep into Bernie Sanders, we have to get over a few things, right? So this this is Medicare for All. You are here if you're with this guy, you're here. And this is what you think, because you're talking out of your ass. You think Medicare for all is socialism. Is socialism the da socialism? Socialism is going to destroy America. Socialist, you're a socialist, you're a commie. Communist, sir. <laughs> That's you. It's coming right out your ass. <clears throat> coming right out your ass. So 70% of Medicare for all, right? 70% of the people, this is not a radical idea at all, right? So because because it's because America is about what the people want. So 70 70% of the American people, when polled, say yes, Medicare for all. But here's the problem, Bernie. Still, we haven't heard you say it. Before we watch your video, which you make excellent points and you defend Medicare, we're going to be here for a while watching it. As someone who campaigned hard for Hillary Clinton from one end of this country to another, it is an outrage that she had to run against not only Donald Trump, but also the Russian, Russian government. Bernie Sanders, kindly, kindly clarify, now that we know that Russia had nothing to do with Donald Trump and Russia had nothing to do with hacking any election, any DNC stuff, that that was a leak from the inside, uh, kindly come clean. You look stupid. You look stupid. We can forgive you for for you know for um, for taking people's money and all that stuff. But this you can't get over this, right? You can't get around this, Bernie. Please come forward. Please, Bernie Sanders. Please just say something small, just a little bit. Just give us something, something that we don't think that you're a complete ass. So uh, here's Bernie Sanders. Uh, CBS, I believe, yeah. CBS um, had him on talking about uh, Medicare for All. It's a good idea. It's, it's, it's long overdue, cuts all the costs in half. But we're going to hear Bernie Sanders describe it in his own words. Uh, so the first thing you notice when you see C uh, CBS is look at the chair setup, right? Bernie looks like a, like a dwarf. You see how they, they've set it up where, where it's big, you know, this guy is... Look how big he is, and look how small Bernie is. Big, small, right? Now, you see, what you'll watch the light change, too. I'm just pointing out how mainstream media is already rigging the presentation against Bernie. All right, they put a nice American flag behind them. But let's just hear Bernie Sanders. My pleasure. So, I guess at this point, we, do we have to call you the front runner now? Given how much <laughs> you see how just, just he is the front runner. Bernie Sanders is the goddamn front runner, you idiot. You see how his... his um, his complexion is kind of, it's not shiny, he's not bright white. Watch Bernie. Money you've raised? I'm not watching. <laughs> see? You see what they do? They make him look like 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 he's con always contrasted. He's bleach white. He's the white guy. He's an old white man. You don't want to work. You don't want to you don't want to roll uh, vote for an old white man again, do you? Another old white man. That's that's just that's just that. The chairs, the chairs, little old Bernie. And and old white pal Bernie, and then the <clears throat> commentator, of course, CB CBS is big, tall. Into, into front runners, I suspect that will be changing every other day. Part of the reason why we wanted to do this is to sort of explain generally what is Medicare for all, because Good. it's it's talked about a lot. Yeah. Uh, you are though essentially the guy who championed this uh, first and more than anyone. So, 
So, so today we're going to learn. Today we're going to learn what Medicare for All is, so that so that you don't have to write. Well, look at the comments too. Because a lot of you guys made a lot of comments. I want to talk about the uh, pro-Trump whatever bullshit, right? So j- just listen, listen to what Medicare for All is. And tell me, you could tell if you could tell me why it's not in your best interest to push this forward. I would love to fucking hear it. Right? Just tell me. Right? You write it down below, and we'll talk about it. What to you is Medicare for all? The United States of America is the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people, and that's got to change. So first of all, I believe that health care is a human right, whether you're old or young or rich or poor. Everybody in the United States of America, richest country on earth, is entitled to health care as a right. Second of all, the current health care system that we have is completely dysfunctional. We are now spending almost twice as much per capita, $11,000 per person every single year, twice as much as any other major country on earth. We pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. One out of five Americans can't even afford them. So we pay twice as much for, for health care, twice as much and cover a fraction of the of the people, and, and we pay the highest price for drugs. Why is that? The drugs are made right here, and we pay, we pay more. Right? Medicine they need, and yet at the end of all of that, you got 30 million people without any health insurance and even more who are underinsured with high deductibles and high copayments. And then on top of that, you got parts of the country where people who do have health insurance can't even find a doctor. The function of the current healthcare system that we have to change is to make billions of dollars in profit for the insurance companies and the drug companies. I believe in a healthcare system that guarantees healthcare to all people in a cost-effective way, which is what Medicare for all is. Last point. Medicare today is the most popular health insurance program in the country. It needs improvement, but seniors in this country like it and appreciate it. We should expand that program to all of our people. And when we do that, we're going to save the average American substantial amounts of money in terms of how much he or she pays for health care. This sounds expensive. So how would you pay No, it's less expensive. How does it sound expensive? Now you see... You see the jab, right? You see this, the, the mainstream media jab. Sounds expensive, right? No, but he just told you it's half the price, right? You reduce the price because you're cutting out the middleman. You're taking out Big Pharma. You're taking out the, the insurance company people. Get rid of them. Get, watch. Watch what he says. What's expensive and what's unsustainable is the current health care system. If we are spending twice as much per capita on health care as any other nation, Without healthcare outcomes not even being as good, that's expensive. What our system does is get rid of insurance companies and drug companies making billions of dollars in profit every single year, outrageous compensation packages for the CEOs of the drug companies and the insurance companies, doing away with the administrative nightmare that exists when hospitals and doctors have to deal with hundreds and hundreds of separate health insurance uh, programs. So our program is far more cost-effective. We're going to save the average American substantial sums of money. How much? How much? It's look. I'm See not- right right away they they jab right. The guy's like a jerk off. It's, it's first of all you don't you're not the C- CBS news reporter if you don't know the facts right. So he's just they're just stabbing because nobody has that kind of statistic on their head and nobody knows exactly. But what he's telling you is that you're eliminating the insurance companies. Huge buildings full of full of who knows what kind of people, accountants and lawyers and all kinds of assorted thieves and buildings and stacks and and piles of piles of 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 insurance company thieves in these buildings taking your money, right? You're gonna get rid of them by eliminating them, right? Sounds expensive. No, it's fucking how could you come to the conclusion that it's that it's expensive? It's the opposite. You want the exact number? I don't have the exact number in my pocket, but we'll get you the exact number when we get it going. But we do know it's going to be less. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know exactly to the cent, but this is what I do know. What CMS estimates is that over the next 10 years, if there are no changes to the current system, we're going to spend $50 trillion. 
every study that has been done, even by conservative uh, entities, tell us that Medicare for All is far more cost effective than the current system. So if I'm a 25 year old, a 35 year old, a 55 year old, a 75 year old, no matter my age, I'd be in the same exact system? Well, it'll, obviously, if you're a, basically, yes, Medicare will cover all comprehensive needs in this country. And, and by the way, let me just add to that. Trump has been attacking me and Medicare for all by saying it's going to weaken traditional Medicare. It is not. In fact, our proposal expands Medicare benefits to cover dental, eyeglasses, and hearing aids, which Medicare today does not cover. And what if I have a private or employer-based insurance program right now and I like it? Well, you may be... Listen, listen to this carefully because this is one of the biggest fighting... This is one of the biggest... Fox News talking points, mainstream media talking points. What if I like my insurance? I like my insurance. Look, I have an insurance card. I like it. It's good for me, right? It's such a stupid argument, right? Well, I, I wanna I don't wanna give up my insurance. I have insurance. No, you fucking if you work for somebody, first of all, if you work for somebody and they decide to switch out your insurance, you don't have any say in it. You just take whatever they give you anyway. What do you mean you like it? Right? No one's changing your doctor. No one's changing the hospital you can go to. No one's changing anything other than that it's now that you don't have to worry about, about paying for it out of your pocket, that it becomes a right, a human right as an American, right? Driving the price down, right? And we could put this, this uh, talk to rest finally about health care. Be one of the millions of people who leaves your job this year and you're going to leave your private insurance. You may be one of the many millions of people who finds that their employer has gone out and got another uh, insurance company to cover you. You're going to have to change that. But essentially, under Medicare for all, all people will be covered by Medicare. So bottom line, if I like my program right now, I wouldn't be able to keep it. Well, often you don't have much choice about that. He says the same thing over and over again. Bottom line, that if I like my insurance, I won't be able to keep it. What do you want to keep? What do you want to keep? You want to, you get, everything is the same, you knucklehead, you idiot. Everything is the same. It's the same doctor, the same pharmacy that you walk to, the same hospital, the same treatment. The only thing that's different is you're not paying for it. And, it, and it's just a different card. How hard, how hard is that to understand? How hard is it to say that, why does Trump say 180 million people are going to lose their beloved health care. It's such bullshit. But if you're working for somebody else, you're working for CBS, maybe tomorrow CBS will get a new insurer for you. You don't have much to say about it. In Correct. Fact, Medicare for all is more stable. On the Medicare for all, you go to the doctor you want, freedom of choice regarding doctors, with regard, and, and the same with regard to hospitals. Many Americans don't have that because the doctor you may want to go to may not be in your network. Is this proposal socialism? No. <laughs> Is this proposal proposal socialism? Socialism, the socialism, socialism smear again. There he goes. Socialist. He's a Venezuela socialist. <laughs> That's so fucking stupid. It's so stupid. What are you talking about, you moron? You fucking idiot. <laughs> I sound like my uh, I sound like my, my 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 old neighborhood. Actually, it is not. It's similar to what the Canadians say. Saying. Socialism, because the doctor you may want to go to may not be in. Your say it again, country. you idiot. Is this proposal socialism? No, actually, it is not. It's similar to what the Canadians have. For the average American. Another example, he, he always says Canada, but uh, look at Japan, too. Japan has a wonderful uh, universal health care system for all people. The only difference is the color of your card will change. You'll get a Medicare card rather than a United Health card or a Blue Cross Blue Shield card. You go to the same doctor who practices in the same way, the same hospital that practices, does its thing in the same way. So that's what it is. What it does mean is, look, right now, you know, as you know, in 1965, against massive opposition from Republicans back then, Lyndon Baines Johnson initiated Medicare uh, and uh, Medicaid. So you have Medicare, you got Medicaid, two quite popular programs. 
All that we are saying is over a four year period, we're gonna phase Medicare coverage into every man, woman, and child in this country. So you see this happening over four years? Yeah, I, that's what our bill does. The first year, what we do is say, right now, uh, to be eligible for Medicare, you gotta be 65. We bring it down in the first year to 55, and then we go to 45. We also cover all of the kids, and we also expand Medicare benefits for, for seniors to include uh, dental care, uh, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. I want to go back to this because <clears throat> there are some estimates that say this could cost maybe 10 or 15 trillion over the next decade. Others that say no, maybe no, 35 no. trillion dollars. No, no one thinks it cost. Look, we're spending three and a half trillion right now. The the argument is always that they they're going to throw up these fake numbers, these these pseudo numbers that include the insurance companies in the equation. You got to pay them, right? You got to pay them. No, he's talking about getting rid of them. So the the numbers the the numbers that the mainstream media and the the uh, the establishment puts up are f fake numbers. No. Oh. So what the CMS estimates is that the current system Center for Medicare Services yeah, estimates that this will cost the current system will cost fifty trillion over a ten year period, averaging five trillion a year. Ours will be much less expensive, but you know. Now you know, having been up here on Capitol Hill. That kind of an idea requires full agreement basically from one party because there aren't any Republicans that like what you're proposing here. But over in the House, the Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she's kind of agnostic on this idea of Medicare for all and would rather see the current Affordable Care Act just strengthened. So if you're president and there's a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate, how do you convince Speaker Pelosi to come along with your idea? Well, I think we have come a long way, as you well know, on this issue in the last four years. The way that change takes place in this country is from the bottom on up, not from the top on down. That is his, that is his, um, if, if any, if Bernie Sanders is remembered for anything, it's that right there. Change comes from the bottom up, not from the top down. Right? And that's what he's, that's what he's been talking about the whole time, right? When millions of people ra rise up, if they don't get cheated by a crooked, you know, system, then, then we can we can push the the ball forward and get Medicare for all. But it's the people that was the the fundamental problem that Obama made. Trump made the same mistake. He thought they were both of those guys thought, oh, I'm fucking, I won the president. Look at me, I won. Right? And they're going to go into the White House and that they're going to they're going to solve all the problems of the world. They're going to get everything done that they promised. Right? And then people go back to sleep. What Sanders is saying, and he may have done a you know a great service by waking people up in 2016 and leaving them out there. You know, most of the people that complain about Bernie are saying, he left us, he didn't help us, he left us, he fucking, he dumped us, he turned his back on us and sucked Hillary Clinton's dick. Oh my God, I can't believe he supported Hillary Clinton. Right? Maybe, maybe that's what you had to see happen, right? Maybe that's what we needed to, to happen rather than, because everybody would have just went back to sleep, and Bernie would have went to the White House, and and uh, what happened? And the, and 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 the, the crooked Democrats and the crooked Republicans would just run them over, uh, taking that pharmaceutical money, taking that that Medicare, f that that uh, that uh, insurance money. Right? So, what we have managed to do, I think, in the last four years, is depending on the poll, convince the majority of Americans that this is a good idea, and by the way, an overwhelming majority of Democrats. So our job... It's 70%. 70, I just showed you the statistic. Here it is. 70%, that's the polling information. That's, I, I find this to be accurate, right? 70% of the American people want Medicare for all. When explained properly without rigging the numbers and rigging the information, they want it. They understand it, that it's, it's, it's better coverage for less money. ...is to get the American people standing up and saying, you know what? I should not have to not get the medicine I need because it is so outrageously expensive because the drug companies are ripping us off. I should not hesitate going to the doctor when I'm sick because I can't afford the deductible or a copayment. I should not go bankrupt just because my husband had a serious operation. I think the American people are catching on that healthcare is a human right, that the current system is incredibly wasteful, bureaucratic, much too expensive. And more and more people are coming to the idea of Medicare for all. And when you have a significant majority and members of Congress go home, as is happening, and they go to town meetings and people say, excuse me, I want to see in the United States what every other major country has. Healthcare is a right, not a privilege. 
and you're going to go. You know, the president has now said that he wants his party to be the party of health care. Oh, I know. Have, have you considered doing some version of this that you know would get some, some semblance of Republican support? Well, right now, look, let's be clear. The re president wants his party to be the party of health care. Unfortunately, apparently, what he means by that is throwing 32 million Americans off of the health insurance they have. But I don't isn't know. that what your plan would do, too? Stop. Okay, so there's the other smear, right? The, the big smear, the mainstream media smear, is that Bernie Sanders is going to throw millions of people off of their health care insurance. And this guy, he just, you just saw Bernie Sanders explain it to him uh, at least three times in a row that that's not what's going on. Now, is, is the commentator, is the journalist, you can't call him a journalist, but is the hack a, doing it on purpose? Is he, is he doing it on purpose or is he just stupid? No, of course he's doing it on purpose. He's, he's giving, he's trying to hatchet Bernie Sanders into saying, you're throwing people off the rolls, but that's not what's happening. You're creating Medicare for all, and then you're removing the private insurance companies and everybody is covered. What Trump is saying, and Obamacare with no safety net, no idea whatsoever what to do about it, and let 40 million people fall into the gutter. That's the Republican approach. That's the current approach. No plan. No idea whatsoever how to solve Medicare, how to solve health care in this country. Just get rid of Obamacare. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. I hate it. I don't know what it is. I'll just get rid of it. That, but but so, so the smear, to, just to reiterate, the smear of Bernie Sanders wants to chuck everybody off of their, their private insurance is technically accurate, but you're getting something way better, way more sub substantial, way more significant. Because you'd what be you moving them into Medicare for all? I mean, if they have insurance right now. Wait a minute, what, what is that? Republican support? Well, I think now. Bernie Sanders finally fought back. Listen to how he fights back. This is good. Now, look, let's be clear. The re president wants his party to be the party of health care. Unfortunately, apparently, what he means by that is throwing 32 million Americans off of the health insurance they have. I but don't isn't know. that what your plan would do, too? Because you'd what be you? moving them into Medicare for all? I mean, if they have insurance right now. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a second. President's plan and what he has supported throws 32 million people off of health care. No alternative. We provide health care to every man, woman, and child in this country. I think maybe slightly different concepts. We... Does it make, is it, so, how much clearer could it be, right? This smear that that Medicare for All is going to throw people off of health care, is not going to give them health care, is, is a lie, right? That, that there is a safety net first. You put Medicare in place. We already have it. Medicare works fine, right? I, I worked in welfare. I worked as a welfare worker. I don't talk about it, but I did it for a while. And, and I'll, I'll talk more about it down the road. But I can tell you that, that Medicare, the system itself, is very, very simple. It's just a matter of it's, it's what it is is trying to determine eligibility for people. And that, that determination is now off the table because why? Because everybody is eligible. Everybody will become eligible for Medicare under the system. It's very, very simple. It becomes a single-payer system where the government negotiates prices with the pharmaceutical companies. Remember when you, Donald Trump said, we don't even negotiate. We don't even negotiate prices. We don't negotiate prices. Why? We, we pay whatever they tell us to pay. Is that ridiculous? When was the last time you heard Trump talk about overpaying drug companies for drugs? When? You haven't heard him since he got elected, right? Because he's sucking the, this is Donald, uh, Donald Trump sucking the dick of big pharma. We guarantee health care all he throws 32 million off of health care. Off of the Slightly Affordable Care Act. Slightly different. Off of the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. And they have no alternative. Probably in the recesses of their minds, their alternative is junk insurance, which means we're going to give you a head. We got a deal for you, man. We're going to give you really, really cheap insurance. Really a bargain. Oh, by the way, there's a huge deductible, there's a huge copayment, and it doesn't cover very much. But you know what? It's cheap. That's not the health care. But you know, he's already called this, and other Republicans call it socialism, saying yeah. Democrats are embracing these socialist ideas. Socialist! Socialism! It's socialism! Stupid. 
Well, then they have to ask years. themselves why it is that Canadians have a similar type program. British have a somewhat different program. I wish Bernie Sanders would lean into the camera and say, it's not <clears throat> fucking socialism, you moron. What is socialism? Ask the guy, at Bernie Sanders, ask the commentator, what is socialism? The guy will look at you like, well, socialism is like, you know, it's Russia, isn't it? It's like, it's communism. It's, it's, it's the government doing everything for you, right? It's some, some bullshit like that, right? But no, social programs, you dummy, social programs like the police, like the fire department, like the parks, like, like subways and, and, you know, and, and, uh, you know, buses and museums, those sorts of things. Those are social programs for the people of the country. Program. French have a somewhat different program, but all over the world. Healthcare is considered to be a right of all people. I am sick and tired of talking to doctors in this country who say to me, Bernie, we have lost patients. We have lost patients because by the time they walked in the door here, they were too sick and they died and they could have been saved. All right, that's not what America is supposed to be about. People not quite clear about the exact number. Their estimates, tens of thousands of people die in this country because they don't have health care. And many other people end up in the hospital much sicker than they should be because they don't go to the doctor when they should. So let me just say this. If every other major country, Canada, the UK, France, Scandinavia, Germany, can guarantee health care to all people as a right, you tell me why the United States of America can't do it when we spend twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of other countries. Let me tell you exactly what this debate is about. It's not a health care debate because the current system is dysfunctional. And no one can defend spending twice as much per capita on a health care system which doesn't cover tens of millions of people. What this is a struggle about is the power of the insurance companies and the drug companies who make billions of dollars in profit. They love the current system. You're the CEO of United Health. You know what you made a couple of years ago? You made $83 million in compensation. Great insurance program for him. Not so good for people in United Health. So that is what this debate is about. And Look at this smug motherfucker. Look at this smug face. We're going to get you, Bernie. That's what that face says. We're going to get you, Bernie. I don't know. This is our payroll. We're going to get you, Bernie. What we are going to have to do, and I freely admit it to you, we're going to have to take on hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in ugly, dishonest TV ads from the insurance companies and from the drug companies. But I think the American people are prepared to stand up to that type of greed and move toward Medicare for all. And what happens to those insurance companies after your plan is implemented? Uh, Do they still exist? If you want cosmetic surgery, we, under Medicare for all, we cover all basic health care needs. So they're not going to be there to do that. I suppose if you want to make yourself look a little bit more beautiful, you want to work on that nose, your ears, uh, they can do that. But so basically, Blue Cross Blue Shield would be reduced to nose jobs. Something like that. <laughs> oh, man, it couldn't be more clear. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Now, the markets are going to crash, right? When you do something like this, a big move, right? Why? Because it's just a half a trillion dollars in, in, in just revenue. Who knows? The market capitalizations of these companies is huge. It's huge, huge, right? It's huge market capitalization. The markets are going to crash. So what? Let it crash. Let it go down the fucking toilet and give everybody health care for all. See, that is the debate right there. There's a little more I want to go to a couple more minutes of it. But that was the big argument right there. Bernie Sanders pretty much puts, puts the debate away by saying this is not a debate about health care. It's a debate about getting big pharma out of the goddamn way by putting these uh, giant insurance companies that have been raping the country for so long to, to rest, putting them, in, putting them out of business. Yeah, putting them out of business. But let's also be clear on this argument because I know it's still- We could have, why don't we have a jobs program for former uh, uh, insurance company workers? That's a great idea. Why don't we, why don't we make them, um, why don't we make them sweep the, sweep the subways? We'll put them with little aprons and they can go out and they can sweep the subways where they, they've been ripping off the country for so long. We're not going to take away your job. We're going to give you a new job. We're going to give you a job program where now because you're an insurance company worker and you don't have a job, we're going to put you to work sweeping the, uh, sweeping the streets. That's a good idea. Throw it out to me. 
What happens, you know, people say, well, you're taking away the insurance that people have. It's true. You quit your job tomorrow, okay? You're losing the insurance you currently have, okay? Your employer decides to change insurance policies, and you have no say. Do we, do we really believe that CBS is that stupid? The type of questions and the type of, of uh, you know, uh, lit- it's, this, is, this is journalism by ambush. You're trying to ambush the guy. You're not on his side. You're not being honest. You don't have a real opinion. You just have a list of talking points that you're trying to drive home. Uh, do we really believe that this this is a real journalist doing this? No, I, I don't. You're losing the insurance you have. On the Medicare for All, you have freedom of choice with regard to any doctor. It's going to be there this year. It'll be there next year. and It'll be there the following year. Medicare currently is a strong, popular program enjoyed by seniors. I want that same program to be enjoyed by all Americans. It is. One of the doctors that works with us uh, said to me, you know, the current health care system as it is is essentially designed to respond once somebody is sick. You only go to it if you get sick. We don't have a system that promotes prevention and healthy living. Would your program... In, in the 80s, right? I was a, I, my degree is in nutrition, right? In the 1980s, I studied nutrition and uh, was a dietitian. I was actually a, a dietitian for a period of time. Prevention was the move in the 80s. That's what drove me to, to want to understand about human health. And, you know, I, in, in, now I'm in my 50s. Look how, how beautiful and how, how healthy I am. At 50, right? But the idea is that I've, I've used some of those ideas of prevention uh, at to, for my own benefit. Because when in the healthcare field, you, it's not used. It's not even listened to. Why healthcare? It's not, about health, it's, not about, it's not about preventing disease. It's about letting people get sick and then treating the sickness, right? So universal healthcare, Medicare for all, also then begins the true movement towards prevention, Weight loss programs, smoker secession programs, right? Things that the exercise programs have, have, you know, exercise out in the parks, you know, exercise programs, right? Absolutely. Look. Prevention. And we don't have enough primary care doctors. We are way behind in terms of per capita coverage. Every other country in primary care doctors. We've got a whole lot of surgeons. We got a whole lot of people who do expensive operations, but in many parts of this country, you are sick tomorrow. You can't find a doctor. The re- all right, so that's that's really all. I, I don't want to continue on this, but uh, it's been a long. <laughs> it's been, but now that you've watched it, if you're still watching this, if you're still watching this video, you now understand what what Medicare for all is. It's not a lesser. It's not less. It's the same, but you don't have to pay for it. Right, and you say, "Oh, then, you, then you, we go into that 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 endless loop." Well, somebody has to pay for it, Conti. Nothing is free, but we just told you that you're you're taking the money away from the drug lords and the 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 uh, insurance lords. You're putting them out of business, and you're reducing the cost of you're reducing you're 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 increasing the amount of money available for Medicare. Right for healthcare, and you're reducing the overall cost. Why? Because drugs don't cost twenty five, fifty, and a hundred dollars. They cost a pill costs a dollar. Right? Oh no, no. But then research is going to go down. People are not. Gonna, it's not. It, none of that is true. Most of these medications that that are on the books are are fucking poison. Right? You see, like CN. Why do you think? I'll give you uh, in closing. I'll, I'll end with this. Why do you think that when you're watching? Uh, CNN, for example, and you see this drug company, this drug advertisement come on, right? Eat Cialis or for for penal Cialis, right? And then they rattle off all the side effects of this toxic substance that that they want you to take, right? Now, do you think that 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 advertisement is designed to tell people to go to their doctor and say, yeah, well, I, I saw this pill on on TV. And uh, it's for the uh, pepino, right? Because I have that too, right? No, that's not the, the point of it. The point of it is that pharmaceutical companies give millions and millions of dollars to CNN to shut their mouth about, about what Bernie Sanders is talking about, healthcare for all, about es- elevated cost of insurance, elevated cost of pharmaceuticals, 
elevated cost of, of every aspect of the medical field. Uh, that's why they do it. So when you see those commercials, that's what it is. It's just that's a, they, they're giving money to the ma- mainstream media organization. So they're shh, you can't talk back about it. That's why it's such a problem. You see how the money, the money controls it, right? The money controls the uh, narrative. Right? So, uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's my take on that one. <laughs> Marcus Conti. Marcus Conti recording. 